Hey everybody, welcome to Conver Thoughts. I've got another episode for my favorite topic to cover. All right, welcome. Welcome to the show. My name is Richard, as I already said, uh, in case you forgot. Uh, this is my channel, and it's Contra Mundum Pro Mundo, being against the world for the sake of the world, uh, taking cultural ideas, church ideas, and pushing against them, but for the sake of them for the sake of the world, because the world is passing away, and so are its desires. In this world, we will have trouble, but fear not, I have overcome the world, Jesus reminds us. So um, the world isn't good the way it is. The world has fallen. The world is broken. We can see that. That's evident. Uh, And the Bible has the answers for that and the reasons why that is the way it is, because of sin, because of the curse on creation. That being said, I've got this, which I do kind of daily, not daily, but weekly, Uh, and then there's also Contra Talk which is up here, basically just talking about different ideas, uh, theological ideas and other things in the church and in the culture as well. And that's a little more formal and it's just kind of a one-on-one or uh, one-on-two kind of conversation. So that's a bit about this channel. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it. Uh, It's free and it would really help me out, uh, help out, help, help the content, right? Push out the content further, so. If you want to follow me on Gab, you can do that as well uh, at Genesis 317, at Genesis 317. Okay. Ed Litton, president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Briefly a bit more about me. And this isn't about me ultimately, but I'm a Southern Baptist pastor. I went to a Southern Baptist church. Uh, I went to the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, and I'm, I'm in the thick of it, <clears throat> as it were. Now, I don't wear the bow tie. Uh, I'm not kind of lockstep. Uh, I agree with the Baptist Faith and Message 2000. Um, obviously, you have to be to be a pastor and so on. But there's a lot of stuff I don't like. Uh, I think the six seminaries, the colleges, the missions organizations. I think it's great. It's you know it's a cause for good in the world. But there's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of deep state. Uh, a lot of kind of political stuff. I think it's too big. We went to the convention in June in Nashville, and yeah. It's just too much. There, Ed Litton was nominated to be the president in a runoff. It was four guys, which is never a good sign. Convention was also very large, also not a good sign. Um, And at least for Southern Baptists, usually if things are good, the convention's small. And it wasn't small. It's been the biggest since 25 years or so. That being said, Ed Litton already had some baggage. His wife preaching a number of times with him, as well as having a weird view of the Trinity and some other things happening at his church and before all this plagiarism stuff came out. Now, first it was allegations, and now it's just patently, here's this series, here's this series, here's this sermon. And this is after they erased a lot of sermons on YouTube and on the website. And so you can't find most things now, but a lot of people grabbed some, and I've got a few videos uh, about that, comparing some, and then also looking at other Southern Baptist leaders and other just church leaders in general. And I mean... I don't want to be a cool kid, quote unquote, but I also don't want to be um, kowtowing to whatever in the sense of thinking everything's going to be about politics or the Southern Baptist Convention. Christ will use and live and move and do all the things past the Southern Baptist Convention if the Southern Baptist Convention goes away from her mission, which let's be honest, it's been drifting for quite some time. Um, and I say that lamentingly, I don't say that with giddy, like, yes, dirty, uh, you know, whatever people, but, you know, with the likes of, you know, Beth Moore and others that are just encouraged, um, to, you know, be this big tent as it were. And it's like, we, we can't be big tent when it comes to things that are abhorrently wrong in the scripture, which just, just doesn't work. Um, we're not Republicans or even Democrats, although Republicans have a bigger tent than Democrats, but not much. Anyway, not what this is about. Ed Linton has said a few things. Of course, there was multiple plagiarism things and videos and everything else. I did some of those. There's plenty of them out there. You've probably seen them. And he's defended. I did one recently where he kind of talks about it on a podcast and he's been forgiven and so on. That's fine, and I appreciate it. So there are in particular, a couple of particular cases, times where I made statements that others have been able to line up 
with statements that from the same text, the same passage that uh, JD used. Okay, we got to wait. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, so <clears throat> what he what he's saying is he's saying hey, there's statements. And you could line up stuff and make it look like I plagiarized. Like, he's kind of dismissing it. At least that's what it appears to be. But further still, he's acting as though, because of that, you know, it's just because I studied Romans and he studied Romans, we said the same things. Wrong. That's, that's, that's a, literally impossible. Literally impossible in every way. Why? Because, well, oh, I don't know. I'm reading and studying, going through the Ten Commandments. I've got... This book, I've got Alistair Big, I've got Clowney, I've got a Moeller book, I've got an old William Barclay book. This like totally falling apart like this. Just like pages, just, just like out. Um, and none of these guys, they're all talking about the same thing. Ten Commandments, here they are. They're pretty basic. I'm on commandment number seven. If you want, uh, check out our church, New Harvest Baptist Church. Um, and it's not a lot there, but if you're curious. And yeah. They, it, but they don't say any of the same stuff, even though it's the exact same words. I mean, thou shalt not murder was last week. Thou shalt not commit adultery is this week. You shall not commit adultery. And yet they have all sorts of application and different things and pulling different cross-references and how this deals with the character of God and people and relations to men and women and so on and so on and so on. Like, it's not just one sermon, Dr. Ed Reverend Lytton, President. It, like it's multiple sermons and it goes back not just jd greer but also tim keller you 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 plagiarize tim keller stuff with your wife preaching which enough is alone to disqualify you from pastoral ministry and certainly from being the president going against corinthians first and second timothy titus i mean going against the baptist faith and message the thing that you say that you support that you're going to uphold like the president upholds the constitution right united states uh, president, you know, defend enemies, both foreign and domestic, blah, blah, blah. And yet most presidents don't do that. Their basic task is they don't do it. Well, he's not doing it either. And he says it's not plagiarism. Well, here, the problem is it is plagiarism. Plagiarism from the dictionary on the Apple computer, the practice of taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. This giant... 1828 Webster Dictionary. It's good to get printed paper too, by the way. I'm a big advocate of that. They can't change it nearly as easily anyway. Plagiarism from 1828. The act of purloining. That's good. Purloining another man's literary works or introducing passages from another man's writings and putting them off as one's own. Literary theft. Plagiarist. One that purloins writings of another. All right, we get the idea. Purloins. That's a great word. I'm going to use that. It's now in my vocabulary. But that's what Ed Litton did. Like, repeatedly does he say something, preaching it. He doesn't say at the beginning, in the middle, and the end. He doesn't say, oh, I forgot. Oh, shoot, I preached this one sermon, and I forgot where I got it from. Uh, so to answer your question, I don't consider that plagiarism. But let me tell you where my sin was. My sin was I did not credit him to my church. And, and it, I've been asked Why? And I'm a little mystified by that, too, because uh, I'm very transparent with my people. And the goal of, of using material, whether it's written by R. Kit Hughes or International Critical Commentary or any other commentary you use, is to, to expound on the text and to make sure people understand the verse-by-verse -verse meaning of that text. So that was my goal. It wasn't to become famous, because quite frankly, if that was my goal, I would not have picked J.D. Greer as someone to quote problem was I did not credit him. And I have repented of that to my church. I have repented of that to our leadership. And quite frankly, we're in a process of changing some things. I'm fasting from listening to preaching right now. Because it turns out I have a capacity to remember statements that are made in an audible sermon that I hear that's a little too good. And sometimes it gets mixed up. But, but the truth is, uh, this has been a very painful process for me. It's been a hot I want to be generous. I really do. Um, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to be the guy that you know attacks Ed Litton. Because here's the thing: he's attacking himself. Number one, his <sighs> a 
Like the cause of Christ is at hand, right? Is It's at stake. Jesus's name, Jesus's church is being maligned. And and most people are like, well, yeah, you know, it kind of just, it's just kind of a misunderstanding. So is it a misunderstanding when someone, I don't know, abuses someone else physically, sexually? And it's like, well, I mean, his hand was just kind of all over the place. It was hard, you know, hands go in all sorts of directions. It's really hard to really, you know, keep your pants on all the time. Like, would we would we buy any of that argument if that was what was being said? Or in a paper, right? He's got a doctorate, a doctor of ministry degree from Southern. Yeah, oh, shoot. Yeah, I wrote that whole paper. I forgot to quote all those people. Hmm, by golly. I mean, i tell you what, I'm going to fast from not reading because I have such a capacity to remember things. So, and, and I pass them off as my own. Okay, so again, say he has a photographic memory or whatever function in the brain that that is. There's things when I'm preaching, and I'm sure that if you're a preacher or you're teaching or you're just talking, that you know is not your original idea. And you know that you didn't get it from something else. Now, if you're preaching, I think, uh, convictionally, you take the text and you um, you know, do a good outline, maybe get some quotes. But I don't think scripted preaching is really preaching, to be honest. I don't, I don't think that's preaching. I think you're not yielding to the Spirit at that point to let Him use you and prompt you. Because there's things that I'll say that I didn't plan on saying. Now, maybe that's what He's referring to. Maybe. But... I've said stuff and told stories. I've told the story a few times talking about a pastor. It's Doug Wilson's father. If you know Doug Wilson, his dad, I forget his name. But he talks about how he, the dad, knew a family in World War II who didn't have kids because they believed the Antichrist was here. Rapture's right around the corner. We're not going to do this. And what they did was they severed off their legacy, their, their, their heritage. They don't have children. They don't have grandchildren. They don't have anything. They're done. All because they believed so firmly in one particular doctrine of the end times. And I've said that a few times. Now, I don't say that my dad or my grandfather said that. I could say that, but that's what Ed Litton has done in a few different times. Oh, I, or so-and-so, or this, or that, or when I was taking driver's ed school. Either you you went to driver's ed and this thing happened or it didn't. I remember I got a bloody nose during driver's, um, during my, uh, it wasn't the test, it was uh, my training. I had a couple of you know, things behind the wheel with training. He also had the, you know, big crazy thing that under the dashboard. Um, called a brake. Okay. Not that unusual. Um, I also got a hundred on my driver's test. This is in California, right? So it's probably very lenient. Uh, <laughs> but those, all those things happened to me. They didn't happen to Ed Litton. Now maybe they did, but it's not me retelling Ed Litton's story or him retelling mine, hopefully. But that's what he did routinely with J.D. Greer, uh, Tim Keller, and probably many others too, because this behavior goes back till 2013, 2012, or further. And quite frankly, it's not a matter of, you. oh, he, oh, I remembered this thing, and I just had this concept, and it snuck into my brain as if it was my own. That's basically what he's saying. I have the capacity, like he just boasted, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, just, I guess I just have such a, a large brain and capacity to remember things. Wow. Okay. I mean, yeah, maybe. Or maybe not. But like he's reading stuff. That's the problem. You can watch the sermons. You can watch the comparison videos. Mine, Reformation Charlotte. Uh, uh, what is it? Watchdog. Dr. Watchdog. Justin Peters did a bunch on this. Several people looked at this, took the same types of things and either just put them out or, or commented on them as I've done in a few of mine. And He's reading it. You're not you're not recalling something as if you're just kind of expounding on the text and the spirit has prompted you at this point saying, hey, you should say this. That happens to me, you know, usually a couple times in a sermon uh, each time, each time I preach. I'm not bragging. It just, that's what happens. I don't, there's stuff that sometimes it's even more. Sometimes I'll just leave out a big chunk because it just doesn't flow right. It's not working. It doesn't, the audience, quote unquote, you know, it's going too long. Here's a big kind of long, boring quote I'm going to not use and other things like that. If you if you pastor, if you preach, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that's not what he, Lytton is saying, though. He's like, he's basically excusing his behavior as, you know, it wasn't really plagiarism. I just didn't credit J.D. Greer. But that's what plagiarism is. It's exactly what plagiarism I mean, I literally just read it. 
Merriam-Webster, same thing. The act of using another person's words or ideas without giving credit to that person. The act of plagiarizing something. I mean, it's really, really basic. It's not, it's not complicated at all. And yet, he wants to make it seem like, yeah, you know, you, you guys just misunderstood. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, further, I mean, the Bible has a lot to say. I mean, don't thou shalt not steal, right? Thou shalt not bear false witness. There's a, a few of the Ten Commandments right there that Ed Litton was doing and is quote unquote repented of and is fasting from sermons because he apparently listens to them and yet recalls them as if they're his own words. Does that make any sense? That doesn't square with me. I don't, I don't, does that square with you? I mean, drop a comment. Tell me, is Ed Litton, is he good now or no? Is he still, is he still walking in nonsense? Uh, I mean, Ephesians 4.28, the one who has been stealing must steal no longer must work doing good with his own hands. Romans 13, 9, commandment, commandments, right? That's in Romans, right? Say, do not commit adultery, do not commit murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Proverbs 6, 30, people do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger. But then further, you should still go back and pay. So, Ed Litton has to resign. There's no way for the SBC to remove a president. There's no impeachment process. There's no Congress. There's no one can like can do can do that. And we all know how well that goes anyway, even in the US. But he just has to resign because this still all you're doing, it's it's as if there's a fire, a campfire, and he's like, oh no, it's kind of getting out of hand, and there's some like gasoline over here. And it kind of looks like gasoline, but it also kind of looks like water. And he's like, I don't know. Let's just pretend it's water. And he's throwing it on there, thinking it's water, but it's actually making it worse. Now, the big uh, the big Eva elites in the Southern Baptist Convention and other places are going to be like, yeah, this is fine. He's exonerated. He's good. He's good. Don't worry about it. I'm not good. Are you good? Are you fine with this? I'm not fine with this. As a Southern Baptist pastor, this man as my president, I'm not fine with this at all. This is not okay. Because... He's not admitting that he lied. He literally just said, I didn't actually plagiarize. It was about a month ago. And he's like, yeah, what it looks like I did, what it appeared that I did, I don't think that I did. Okay, but if it looks like you did, but you didn't, well, then we need to have some more clarity here. But you actually did, and everybody can see it because, well, I just read three different definitions that all say the same thing, that you're, you passed off multiple sermons, multiple ideas, not just a quote, not just a sermon, not even just a series of a few sermons, but like the whole book of Romans. And you even had your associate pastor do it. And you even do it, not just with J.D. Greer, but also Tim Keller. And you're also having your wife do it. She's not spontaneously doing whatever. Is she listening to Tim Keller's sermons too and also recounting these things? I'll wait. I got time if you're watching, Dr. Lynn. Just kidding. He's not watching. I did email his office though, church about six weeks ago. And I don't know if they know it's me that made the videos or not. Probably not. But I asked him to clarify and also, Hey, these are, you need to be more specific. This was before he did that other podcast with the two guys or four guys or whatever it was. It was a Baptist potluck pot podcast that I covered. And then they reached out and then his presidential office, not the church office, but the presidential office reached out to me and we're like, oh yeah, we could talk. And I'm like, all right, that sounds great. Can we make this public? Oh no, I want to talk between you and me. And that was about a month ago and they haven't reached back out. So I'm going to leave the ball in their court. Obviously they don't want to talk. That's fine because you don't want to clear the air. If you're innocent, which you're not, because we have eyes. Anybody who has eyes can see that this is abhorrent. It's totally wrong. Anyway, I could keep going. I'm not going to. You got to resign, man. And, and churches, SBC churches, you have to ask for this man's resignation because this is unacceptable. And even Adam Greenway, you should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, you're a doctorate. You've got this. You're super crisp, clean cut. You were under Moeller for a long time. You were at Southern. I met you several times. The Christ's church is at stake. His reputation is at stake. Now, obviously, if Ed Litton doesn't step down, it's not going to derail the gospel, right? The gates of Hades will not prevail against the gospel. However, what will happen is people's 
hypocrisy will be ever more bubbling up to the surface. And it's already happening. Already happening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe. I really appreciate that. Share it with your friends. Um, and yeah, drop a comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me where you're from. Uh, if you're part of a Southern Baptist church and, and all the rest, because it, I want to know. I'm going to react to your comments and interact with them. I don't have, um, I mean, I'm busy, but I like to interact with people and talk about the ideas because we have to, we must. Uh, if things things die in darkness and don't people don't talk about them. So anyway, this has been uh, Contra Thoughts and uh, hoping to help you be against the world, but for the sake of the world. All right, y'all take care.